Hello and welcome to Business Today Television. I'm Siddharth Zarabi and you are watching our pre-budget coverage and joining me today is a stellar panel of indus Indian industry uh, from the CII, Mr. Sanjeev Bajaj, President of the Confederation and the CMD of Bajaj FinServe Limited. Also joining us is Sanjeev Puri, Vice President of CII and the CMD of ITC Limited. Mr. R. Dinesh, the President-designate at CII and the Executive Vice Chairman of TVS Supply Chain Solutions also joins us and Chandrajit Banerjee, the Director General at CII. Welcome to the uh, show. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, I want to begin uh, by asking you to specify what kind of policy prescription would you ideally want to see in this budget to deal with the global headwinds and uncertainty on the economic front that has emanated. India continues to remain a bright spot in terms of growth globally, but there do seem to be some concerns, Mr. Bajaj. Thanks, Siddhartha. I'll focus on four key areas, but uh, let me say first that um, we hope, like in past years, that this uh, budget is going to be pro-business, pro-the economy, and uh, continue to proceed like it has done in previous years. Uh, the four areas I'd like to focus on, one, is importance for fiscal management. And uh, within that fiscal consolidation, uh, so we suggest that the budget should adhere to the fiscal deficit target of 6.4% of GDP in this fiscal, uh, taking it down to 6% in the next fiscal and eventually to 4.5% in FI26. This is important because we are still very much in a uncertain global environment. And hence ensuring that our resilience our macro, macroeconomic stability as a country remains is going to be very important. The second area that I'd like to focus on is a investment-led growth strategy. And the government has been doing a stellar job in this uh, with their capital expenditure uh, spends. We hope that like last year, we see an increase in allocation to capital expenditure by 35%, taking it to 10 lakh crore. This has significant benefits. Not only does it keep the economy going, it creates new jobs, it creates consumption as a result. And hence, my third point is to boosting consumption demand. Uh, we have seen that through the pandemic and the impact of high inflation, that the lowest strata of society has got hit the worst. And we can see their consumption has fallen. So we suggest that uh, personal income taxes should be rationalized for these sections of society so that we put some more money back into their pocket, give them greater stability and get them back into consumption as well. And lastly, combination of these areas, we need to focus on generating more jobs. Our country has a tremendous opportunity to become the manufacturing and service hub for the world over the next decade and additional jobs created will help us grow as a country, will help us grow in our own consumption, and will get the, or will continue the wheels rolling of our economy. Right. Uh, those are good points there, and we'll take them up. Now, Mr. Puri, I want to come to you, and uh, uh, as, as someone who understands India's consumption and the markets, both Bharat and India, so to say, uh, how do you think consumption demand can be supported by the union government's budget? Uh, there are some areas of concern uh, that have emerged, like Mr. Bajaj was pointing out. Thank you. Thank you, Sudhar. So I think uh, fundamentally the, 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 or the central idea is really around, as Sanjeev alluded to, around an investment-led growth. And, and it's, it's, it's around making the sectors, various sectors of the economy more competitive, whilst immediately also creating jobs, which in turn will create consumption and, and further provide impetus to capacity utilization. I think that's that's the whole uh, central pr uh, principle. I think the, the specific areas that I would like to call out is that uh, manufacturing is an important area and, and policy interventions have been focusing on it through, through the PLI schemes, through also reduced corporate income tax. I think the, the uh, banks are uh, in better position to provide credit so the overall situation is good. Indian economy is, is on a sweet spot, as you said. There are global headwinds, but capacity utilization is, is, is picking up. 
So there is an opportunity, I think, to uh, provide uh, similar kind of schemes to employment intensive sectors, be it toys, apparel, uh, you know, or, or footwear for that matter. Uh, and there's been some talk about it. So these are, I think, uh, that's another opportunity. And I think in the context of the uh, China plus one, this also assumes importance because some of these models for sourcing, these are an outsourcing mode. And therefore, I suspect that, you know, switching can be faster if if we can provide the, uh, you know, the, the, the capacity to, for these to be sourced. So yeah. this, this would be an important area. Uh, second, I think also the, the corporate income tax that was reduced <clears throat> for new manufacturing industries. I think a little, some extension of that period would be useful because part of the period has been lost during the COVID period where the opportunity could not be fully leveraged. Now that capacities are now inching towards the, the place where uh, uh, you know reinvestments will happen, I think this is an opportune time to do that. Uh, there is also opportunity to boost employment in the tourism sector. India has a lot to offer in tourism. Right. We have multiple, very strong multiple assets and we have the manpower, the skilled manpower, the demographic to, to support it and give a very, uh, give a nice experience to, uh, you know, visitors. So that's an area that can be boosted and the government is also showcasing a lot of what India has to offer through G20, I think we can build on this, provide some more uh, support to the industry and also promote the specific destinations that we can create as, as centers of excellence for, for tourism in the country. Right. Uh, the third is that I think the, the investments on infrastructure specifically should be targeting rural areas, particularly the last mile connectivity, so that it empowers the rural uh, community. I think the social infrastructure and the physical infrastructure like electricity and uh, you know other other facets water that have been uh, progressively being scaled up i think the government has done a commendable business there i think all these are in any way helping to empower rural communities this will this will help build that up and right. of course agriculture is a big area of opportunity it, right. it's a sector that employs nearly half our workforce Right. Uh, there are a lot of purposeful interventions made in prior budgets, FPOs, agri-infrastructure funds, the focus on bringing the benefits of modern technology to agriculture. I think that journey must continue and methods to accelerate that would be very welcome. For example, CIA has suggested a cluster-based approach, which is around a certain crop with targeted customer segments and markets and create an entire ecosystem with R&D institutions aligned to it. And of course, to, to for India to become competitive, what is also required is, is reliability. Right. And one facet of reliability to my mind in today's time is also resilience and adaptation. Because extreme weather events do right. destabilize uh, supply chains, do create uh, adverse conditions for agriculture. Agriculture is the most vulnerable. I think yes. a lot more focus on adaptation I think will all help build competitiveness and therefore help grow the economy, help grow jobs and therefore consumption. Right. Mr. Dinesh, uh, the point about supply chains uh, uh, and that has impacted India in the last couple of years, particularly uh, during COVID time. And this is both an opportunity and a challenge. What would you specifically feel uh, needs to be done when it comes to supply chains in India, can the budget at all intervene and try and fix some of the hurdles or difficulties that are faced? Uh, thank you, Siddharth. And very good question. And I think if you really look at it, the previous budget set the tone for that, if I can say so, <clears throat> because the first phase of it was the Gati Shakti program. So if you really want to make uh, supply chains, I would call it uh, best in class, you will need to make sure that we have the necessary infrastructure to make that happen. And I think, uh, as was pointed out in the last budget, making sure that uh, six arms of the government came together in that one unified digital portal, which was the Gati Shakti, I think was announced in the budget. And I think we see the implementation of that happening at the ground level, which I think will definitely help uh, from an India context of the supply chain side. But I think the next step of it, which I think again has been announced separately, which is the national logistics policy, and also linking this with the capex spend, which is going to take place, I think will be something which will really make a difference for us, not just in this budget, going forward. 
so what would i think from a cii side we would love to see is how is both of these going to come together can we bring the digital solutions to make this happen and like as happened in various other sectors uh, can the supply chain also benefit from the kind of innovative solutions which uh, the indian government and uh, the co companies involved can work together with from a budget side i think continuing the capex on uh, the gati shakti program and making sure that necessary support is provided for the better outsourcing to supply chain companies so that we don't have the kind of problems which other countries have faced with regard to utilization of this infrastructure is what i think i would definitely love to see right mr banerji i'm uh, coming to you and uh, you know from a from a corporate taxation point of view we heard a suggestion uh, from uh, mr puri but i want to come to the personal income tax part this is the last full budget prior to next year's general election and obviously there is a sense of expectation building up on that front on the other hand we also hear from a market point of view that the government may choose to at least rationalize in terms of the explanation the treatment of capital gains if not actually specifically do something this time around how important are direct tax changes uh, on the overall macroeconomic front through this budget so you know i i mean i'll break it break up the in two parts as you have asked the question first uh, you know uh, the uh, what we have asked as far as the uh, personal income tax goes is uh, basically we have talked about at the lower end of the income tax slabs if uh, to boost the consumption demand and to meet with the you know with the inflationary trends which has pursued in the recent past uh, if there could be some amount of because we have not had uh, uh, you know a, a personal income tax change for some time at, at the lower levels so if that can be if that can be worked upon that would really help uh, uh, ease both these issues that are faced faced by people in terms of uh, both inflation as well as also helping us with the consumption demand and and that has a strong trigger of effect but i would also like to say that you know consequent to the uh, reduction of the corporate tax rates that we have had the differential between the personal and the corporate tax has actually sort of widened and the highest marginal rate of individuals has uh, you know uh, like if you can see has now gone up to somewhere around 42 plus 42.7% which is the highest lap against the normal uh, corporate tax which is uh, as you know uh, 25 uh, 25% or 25.1% uh, or so so this has become further uh, sort of you know uh, complicated uh, with the budget of if you look at 2020 which will introduce a new tax regime of income tax for individuals that mm. coexist with the uh, older one so the brunt of uh, 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 global uh, inflation so to say is falling on taxpayers in the lower and the middle uh, middle level income group and constricting uh, the consumption expenditure so that's the rationale and to boost private consumption expenditure a uh, reduction in the, the tax rate uh, for the individuals with uh, total income say uh, say to about 20 20 lakhs or even a little more than that that could be considered to relieve the uh, to bring relief to the middle class uh, uh, taxpayers and increase the disposable income now right. your second part of your uh, uh, question was relating to the capital gains tax you know uh, at present uh, what we have there is no consistency uh, if you really see in the capital gains tax or or holding period uh, for different types of instruments uh, falling within the same asset class and even the indexation benefits uh, are quite uh, different that differs in different situations so uh, the tax rates also differ for residents as well as for the non residents so what we have been suggesting is to bring out a framework uh, for greater simplicity it's basically more right. looking at simplicity uh, more of consistency and rationalization of the capital gains tax regime mr bajaj i am coming to you uh, and we had occasion to uh speak earlier uh, as well you were at davos uh, listening to what's happening and interacting with global uh, uh industry people how significant is uh the need to control inflation from the fiscal and administrative side because monetary side uh perhaps what needed to be done has been done and we'll see the consequences coming out over the next few months how much of a burden should the government continue to bear for example it's been doing that on petrol and diesel prices what else would you advocate 
So, so that at this point of time, given that we are still in a world playing with all kinds of uncertainty, we believe that uh, managing inflation is an important role both for the central bank and for the government. And there, and there are various steps. I think from the government's point of view, one additional area to look into would be on uh, subsidies and any non-merit-based subsidies should be gradually brought down so that wherever the, the government is spending the traditional money is all going towards productive investments which will give even greater growth going forward. Um, I believe that uh, there is an opportunity a few quarters down the line with China opening up, growth coming back from China that uh, and, and you talked about Davos that the world is talking about now Europe if at all seeing a mild recession not as strong as earlier so while it's still early days let's hope that that is true and hence then the window for future growth is actually a short window that needs to be taken care of um, a country like India has tremendous promise now to becoming the manufacturing and service hub for the world and this will be for the next decade and more for that to happen, we have to ensure that there is stability on uh, the rupee, um, there is stability on interest rates and inflation. Domestic consumption for us is a very important lever and our current K-shaped recovery can become just an upward curve, curve recovery if inflation is controlled. So these are all the many reasons why it's important to make sure that inflation as it seems to be uh, continues to stay within uh, a range that the central bank is comfortable with. Uh, Mr. Puri, uh, would you advocate the need to increase what is given in terms of the social um, uh, welfare schemes, for example, on the job uh, front, the rural employment front? We also have a food grain scheme that has been continued and extended. What kind of impact would it have on supporting consumption? See, I, I believe that, uh, you know, investments uh, in, in social infrastructure, uh, whether it's education or health, these are areas that must be uh, enhanced. Uh, the journey of uh, providing the basic facilities to rural where commendable progress has been made, I think that should continue because that is something that is going to empower the communities and, and, and that is going to uh, enable greater amount of productivity there. Now, the support that is required in addition to that, uh, whatever is uh, whatever is required to be done and it is, it is whatever is in a way productive and whatever is essential should be done wherever it is a non-merit area, that okay. should be re-looked at. Fair so, point. some kind of, I think, uh, support on uh, 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 the, the continued support on MD Narega, the support on the you know, providing of uh, the scheme that the government has now gone for, uh, announced for the, uh, by providing grains to people. I think yes. those are the, those are things that are certainly required, but uh, there are, there are, there could be other areas where, uh, you know, there are many schemes available and after a review, wherever things are not uh, meeting the desired objectives or, or not really, uh, you know, in that sense, productive or, uh, should be phased out. That's the way I would I would put it out. So it has That's to be a, a, certainly a balanced and calibrated approach. It cannot be uh, a one-sided approach. Yeah. Well, uh, the need for balancing is very significant. As we wind down this conversation, I'm coming to Mr. Dinesh and then Mr. Banerjee uh, for final comments. Mr. Dinesh, uh, the uh, one of the commentaries that uh, we are hearing in terms of feedback globally is people looking at India's manufacturing uh, story from 20 years ago when services was what was being spoken about and now manufacturing and the fact that there is a serious consideration at least to the fact that India is attempting a manufacturing expansion. Uh, anything that you feel specifically the budget could do to continue to build on what has been done in the recent past? Ah, yes, and I think it's true so that what you're saying is very correct. The reason for that is actually twofold, right? One is that India has become an alternate from a global supply chain perspective to some other countries whom they have been focusing on in the past. The second is the pure domestic consumption which India is attracting. I think from a budget perspective, uh, the PLI scheme and the further support which you can give for employment generation through that actually is a virtuous cycle which you build with the domestic consumption also. So the way I would look at it is you actually solve two problems with one solution. 
which is to make sure that you continue to focus on supporting investment in manufacturing, which actually leads to better employment rather than just CapEx being spent on, uh, I would call it technology alone. But if you make sure that this kind of a link comes through, I, I would 100% say that will really propel growth, both domestic and uh, from a manufacturing sector for investments for overseas. And if I can say so, one element which, I mean, more from my personal side, I would like to add would be to see how that supply chains really become efficient. Because once India gets efficiency in the supply chain side, I think that's a permanent moat which we will build. And with our geographical location, I think we'll have a very unique advantage over some other parts of the world. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Banerjee, the final point on the show uh, to you today, and I'm taking up Mr. Bajaj's point about job creation. Now, this is... Uh, for for uh, Indian companies, uh, job creation is not something that they do alone. They would want all of India to have gainful employment because that is what will ultimately boost consumption. In terms of job creation, do you think there is the possibility of supporting private sector job creation through a specific proposal that can say, okay, for three years or five years, you would get additional support or, or, or some kind of trade-off? So yeah, there are uh, yes, uh, there are two three uh, two three uh, things on this. Number one is you know of course we have been talking about something called the you know like you have the PLI the production linked incentives. We have been talking about uh, 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 an employment uh, linked incentive. That's something that we have talked about uh, 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 that if that can uh, that can that can really further investment and. Uh, help even create further jobs and that uh, so a, a more of an in and looking at the you know um, um, employment intensive sectors there could be sectors like logistics tourism leather so so there are many sectors which could where, where we could really focus uh, focus on so you know what what also is happening is there was there was one particular section which was called the ATJJAAA which which we said that that should be extended for some time so that itself also also helps in uh, incentivizing the private sector to uh, add jobs. Now, you know, in, in terms of employment generation, infrastructure, it, uh, as we know, is destined to grow. And, and investment and growth in infrastructure and with the real estate coming up, that will lead, lead to uh, employment generation. So I would really look at uh, focusing on this. This will encourage even private sector to employ. So I would really look at uh, focus on these areas and introduction of uh, urban employment guarantee scheme. That's again, mm -hmm. something very, very important based on the principles of employment guarantee, which was enshrined in the Manrega. That's also a very important area. And further, impetus on fostering, which again is very, very important, is the entrepreneurship uh, development ecosystem that they, you can create much more jobs, uh, be it through the banking financial incentives, skill development, incubator centers, that will transform job seekers uh, uh, to, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, for job seekers into job givers. So, and uh, uh, one last point I had, you know, there are different areas which are coming up today, which are areas like, say, electronic vehicles, green and sustainable jobs. These will obviously be very much required for Indian industry. And, and, and I, I find that we would really need to have a particular level and a particular focus on skilling in these areas so that uh, act actually the, the shortage also comes from that people are not appropriately trained. So if we really look also at, uh, at that point of view from, that, uh, from now, we do not face a crisis and we uh, industry would like to absorb those type of manpowers pro provided we have uh, uh, we have uh, we have uh, appropriate training. So I think uh, the entire picture of jobs have to be seen uh, from uh, a much uh, larger perspective, uh, creation by the private sector and also enabling factors of creation of employment. Absolutely, Mr. Banerjee. And uh, I think employment is uh, what really will continue to lift uh, India's productive capacity and consumption. Uh, viewers, you've had a top uh, level view of what budget 23-24 should ideally focus on. It's a mix, but then uh, bu budget making exercise by the central government for uh, economy as large, as wide uh, as India is a complex exercise. Hopefully, some of these suggestions will find their way into the final policy announcements and that will go a long way in continuing to boost and support India's growth. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, Mr. Puri, 
Mr. Dinesh and Mr. Banerjee, thank you very much for your time with us here today. With that, it's a wrap on this show. We'll be back with more. Do stay tuned in. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.